So, um, last Sunday, February 26th, was the fifth anniversary of me, uh, activating this channel. Uh, and I was thinking of what I wanted to do for, uh, for that, and, uh, after thinking about it, I don't think there's anything other than this video that I would want to do. Um, so, those of you who are familiar with my channel know that I don't do YouTube atheism that much anymore. I used to, that was one of the first things I got into on YouTube, but, uh, and a lot of people like, uh, Invincible Numinist, Spock Talk, uh, have be seemed to have become kind of disillusioned with YouTube atheism for what I think is good reason, because most, uh, people who talk on the issue, both atheist and theist, are kind of pathetic, to be honest. I mean, there are plenty of exceptions to that rule. Uh, you have theoretical bullshit and, uh, Das American Atheist, um, well, kind of Das American Atheist, on the atheist side, and on the theist side you have, uh, you have, well, you had Veritas 48, you have, I don't know, MIG Killer, I guess, would be an example, but, uh, but the point is, in most cases, um, you don't have very good, uh, people in the debate. Uh, and, uh, I've decided that I kind of want to revive my YouTube atheism because I think that I can inject, rather than becoming disillusioned and just saying, there's no point, just walk away, I think there's something that, uh, I can contribute to the YouTube atheism debate. And I'm sure at least some of my subscribers will be very disappointed in me for coming to this conclusion. But anyway, one of my, one of the first, actually the first video I put on this channel that wasn't a mirror was a video response to a video by the Irish Pollock. Um, he was asking a bunch of questions, and I'm gonna be honest here. I think the Irish Pollock, if he made uh, any videos anymore, his last videos from like a year ago, uh, could replace. Veritas48. There's another person I think could replace Veritas. Uh, his name's Jel J. Delfiki42. Those two, I think, are even better, actually, than Veritas. But uh, neither of them make many videos. Uh, <laughs> but, so I've decided that uh, this is going to be my official five-year anniversary celebration video. And I'm going to celebrate it by uh, answering the Irish Pollock's questions. Uh, he's given two of them this time. Uh, question one, I think, is going to be pretty easy to answer. What's easier to prove, existence or non-existence, and why? Existence. Uh, and you don't even need to uh, go into anything physical to see that. Let's use mathematics. In order to prove that there exists a number that, there exists at least one number that uh, is prime. All you have to do is find a number that's prime and show that it's prime. Um, in order to find a number or an object that uh, has certain properties, all you have to do is find that object in order to show that it exists. In order to show that anything doesn't exist, well, that's a little harder, and it depends on the situation, how you're going to show that. In mathematics, what you usually do is you assume that some, something like that does exist, and so it leads to a contradiction. In uh, Sometimes you have to do it exhaustively. You have to search every possible situation and show that in none of those situations does, it, does something like that exist. But in all cases, I think... Uh, it's pretty easy to show it's pretty easy to show that it's harder than simply finding an object and showing that it has certain properties and therefore an object with those properties exists uh anyway uh that was pretty simple to answer i think question number 2 uh assuming the big bang occurred what was its cause well 
uh, first of all, and this might seem a little pedantic, uh, we don't have to do a lot of assuming here. The Big Bang, almost certainly, to beyond a reasonable doubt, did occur. Um, I mean, we have quite a bit of evidence showing that. We have the metric expansion of space-time, the cosmic background radiation, the abundance of helium in the universe, and the relative similar the relative similarity of the universe at large scales and its correspondence with variations in the cosmic microwave background. Um, and I'm kind of sort of part of a team in the University of Minnesota right here where we're trying to confirm a more specific version of the Big Bang called inflation, which that's really exciting. Uh, so, there, like I said, there's not a lot of assuming going on when you assume that the Big Bang occurred. But uh, what was its cause? Now, the simplest answer I can give is I'm not sure. And nobody at this point is sure. Uh, but assuming that I'm allowed to speculate here, um, first of all, we're, I mean, the first thing is we're assuming that there had to be a cause involved, I think. And that's an assumption that we can't just take for granted. And a lot of people do take it for granted. Uh, the Kalam cosmological argument uh, uh, famously has as a premise everything that begins to exist must have a cause. And why should we think that? You can't prove it, at least not a priori. You can't infer it from experience or it's very difficult to infer it from experience because just because A precedes B doesn't mean that A caused B, right? So, uh, it's pretty difficult to actually demonstrate that the uni universe or the Big Bang must have had a cause. But assuming it did, um, there is, um, what I think is almost universally accepted as what would be the cause among quantum cosmologists. Quantum cosmology is pretty much the study of the pre-Big Bang state of the universe. Uh, but actually, I just learned, we just reviewed in quantum mechanics class today, quantum tunneling. Quantum tunneling is basically... An object can penetrate a barrier even if it ordinarily couldn't get across it. What that means is, let's say that I had a fence that was had a certain amount of height. Now, in order to uh, jump over that fence, I have to jump at a certain velocity. I have to give myself a certain energy. And under classical physics, if I don't jump high enough, I can't clear the fence. That's just common sense. In quantum mechanics, however, there is a certain probability that I can essentially jump over that fence even though I didn't give myself, even though I didn't jump high enough. Uh, and it results from the fact that when you have, when you solve the time independent Schrodinger equation for the case of um, a barrier, uh, what you have, what the equation tells you is that the solution is a function that is its own second derivative. And um, I'm not going to uh, get into what a second derivative is, but basically the there are two functions that satisfy that condition. You have sines and cosines, which are these wave things, and you have and exp exponential functions, which do that. So what you have is on each side of the barrier, you have a sine and cosine. But when uh, inside of the barrier, you have an exponential decay. So uh, the long bigger the barrier is, the more it's going to decay, so the less of a probability you have of tunneling through. But it's never going to be zero. There's always a non-zero chance that you'll have gone over that barrier despite not having jumped high enough. I hope what I'm saying makes sense, by the way. I'm hoping I'm explaining it 
in a way that people can understand. Now, as it is for uh, quantum particles, and this is how an electron gets out of a proton during beta decay, because normally it wouldn't have enough energy to do so, but it quantum tunnels through it. And, it, and as it is for electrons, so it might be for the universe. Uh, we don't have a theory of quantum gravity. We don't quite know how gravity operates at these tiny scales that we're talking about when we're talking about the Big Bang. But uh, what, from what we do know, it looks like we might have a similar situation. At the pre, at the pre Big Bang, if that uh, even exists, state. We ha um, we start off in exponential. Instead of an exponential decay, it's actually an exponential growth, and so you have an, a universe which pops out of um, a quantum chaos state, and I'll get into that later. And it blows up basically. You have this huge expansion of space time. Then, once it goes past a certain radius then it starts um, going back into sinusoidal mode, basically. So, um, again, there's a certain probability that a universe will tunnel from nothing to a universe. Now, the most common criticism that I get of this is that well, this quantum chaos state that preceded the Big Bang isn't actually nothing. Well, um... I mean, this is called quantum chaos. Chaos comes from the word from nothing. Uh, it's Greek. And uh, you can calculate the properties that this quantum chaotic state would have had. It has no space, no time, no energy no angular momentum, no structure. I'm honestly not seeing the difference between uh, quantum chaos and, and the philosophical concept of nothing. Maybe you can uh, find a difference, though, and I'd love to hear it, by the way. Um, if anyone can think of a difference between quantum chaos and nothing, uh, please comment on this video. So, uh, that's my answer to that second question. If the Big Bang did have a cause, it would have been quantum tunneling from nothing. So, uh, that's it. Uh, that's all the questions, and, you know, one of the things that I really like about this Irish Pollock guy is he's genuinely interested in the answers. He's not asking for the purpose of stumping atheists. He's not doing that at all. He's generally wondering what an atheist is going to uh is going to say as an answer. So I hope that this uh gives uh gives him my perspective. Uh I hope it's to his satisfaction and um hope everyone enjoyed this video and see ya.